what's going on YouTube it's your boy Cello here back with another video so thanks for coming back and watching the vlog so today what I wanted to do as you can see I'm posted up out here behind some some shopping store but what I wanted to do today was to just do a little review on the Evo because I haven't done that before on the channel so you guys will have a better understanding of where I began as I progress on into the future it's about that time of year where most car people um, at least in northern areas that has snow put their cars away you know one to avoid damage from the salt and two to you know take that time to make modifications to the car whether it be like pulling the motor or just doing minor things or whatever have you so I'm probably gonna be doing the same um, it actually snowed snowed a couple weeks ago but it actually rained yesterday so I, it cleared up a lot of the salt and there's no snow anywhere else so I took this time to I want to take this time to shoot this video before I put my car away because I got a lot of things that I want to do too so without further ado uh, we can just get, get into the review so I'm gonna start with the outside of the car um, the outside for the most part is pretty stock uh, for the wheels they're buddy one p1 racing QFs um, they're super lightweight wheeled forged aluminum and I also have the rally armor mud flaps obviously on the front and back let's see have the OEM Mitsubishi window visors and then in the back we have the JDM Evo 7 tail lights on the inside the inside is pretty stock as well well maybe not really so I have the I still have the OEM uh, Evo 9 Recaro seats OEM Mitsubishi Momo wheel also have the AEM AFR wideband gauge and then I have my defi gauges so this one is oil temperature uh, oil pressure and then boost gauge um, I want to take this out in the future and move the gauge boost gauge at least over here um, don't know why they put it over here and then I have my or I don't know if it's defi or defi whatever I'm gonna go with defi so I have my defi control unit that controls the gauges so that lets me like it says lets me set my warnings so peak warnings and then low warnings and then also um, record pulls so if I want to do a pull real quick and then see what kind of boost I'm running or whatever fuck and then I have some some jank ass head unit and then last but not least under the hood All right, so now we're gonna talk about what's done to the in, or what's done to the car engine-wise. There's actually a pretty decent amount done to it, so I'll just start where the air goes in and the exhaust goes out. So there's the AEM intake MAP SST turbo. It's pretty much a stock frame turbo, so it has uh, different internals. Probably puts out a little more power. I'm not really sure on the specs though. So I have the ETS two and a half inch intercooler piping that goes into the. AMS intercooler through more ETS intercooler piping. Have the GFB blow valve, stock throttle body, uh, ported intake manifold. The engine, uh, the block is stock, um, has 272 cams in it, and that comes out into the uh, MAP tubular exhaust manifold. Uh, I believe it's either one and a half inch or one and a quarter inch uh, runners. And that goes into the MAP Performance O2 housing. And I have the HKS downpipe. And I have the HKS 3 inch exhaust that goes all the way through. It's not a uh, straight pipe either, it has, still has the cat in it. So, besides motor wise, the transmission, uh, at least from the part list that the last owner sent me, it's a uh, Shepherd's transmission, I believe, stage two. Has the Exidy Street Disc Clutch. Ah, fucking speaking's hard. Have the uh, Exidy, no not Exidy, ACT or ACT, however you want to pronounce it. I have their their clutch, it's a straight disc, uh, street disc, so it's not a six puck like a, the one that came on the car. The motor mounts, I believe, are Blox Racing, but there's no like brand marking on them, so I can't really tell, but they look like Blox Racing solid motor mounts, all four. Um, I have Torque Solution motor mounts at home, uh, they just look cleaner and I'm gonna replace the rear motor mount that is on there back to stock because apparently that rear motor mount that is solid now 
causes all kind of vibrations in the cabin of the car and you can hear that sometimes in the video but it's really obnoxious and I hate it so I'm going to switch back to the stock motor mount and hopefully eliminate that vibrating let's see what else that right there is the it's a battery terminal for the Evo 10 um, but a lot of people a lot of Evo guys use the Evo 10 battery terminal instead of the terminal that comes on the nines just because it's easier to mount in places and it's a lot cleaner looking in my opinion and then the battery uh, we moved to the trunk there was a mini battery up front but the one that was on the car when I first got it wasn't even like a legit mini battery it was like a I don't know some little motorcycle battery um, anyway it's pretty it was super jank so we got rid of it um, and then put the battery in the trunk which I have a red top Optima and then just ran the power line Let's see, so for the fuel setup, I have, right now there's stock injectors. There's two fuel pumps in the car. Right now, one isn't working though. And my next video will most likely be the one to fix that issue. So there's two fuel pumps. There's one in tank and then there's one in line. The in tank fuel pump is a Walbro 255, 250 whatever. And then the in line one is a Bosch 044 fuel pump. But the Bosch pump, um, I'm pretty sure is gone bad on me or whatever before when you turn the car on you can just hear it it was like a super loud obnoxious just noise that comes from that fuel pump um, it's actually located under the driver's seat right there but now it's like super quiet and then barely and it doesn't sound like it's uh, running at full capacity and then I can also notice it when I'm driving the car because anytime I try to get into full boost um, sometimes the fuel will cut and then it'll get super lean because there's no fuel in there so my next video, if you stick around to watch that, I'll be running a new fuel line uh, from the rail back to the tank, the feed line anyway, and then see if that fixes my issue. So for the rest of the setup, I have the AMS fuel rail, and then I also have the aftermarket fuel lab fuel pressure regulator, and then the injectors, uh, injectors, the injectors are stock right now, but I have 1200 cc injectors at home, that I'm going to be putting on uh, at some point during the winter. And as for like cooling stuff, the radiator that I have is a Mishimoto aluminum radiator. And then I have this APR carbon fiber like cooling plate. I got it mostly for aesthetics, but I guess it's supposed to like, it's supposed to help push more air into the radiator um, by covering some of the holes that were up here. But other than that, that's pretty much it for the whole car. Um, if you have any other questions or you notice something that I might have missed, just let me know in the comments below. Ugh. So I guess one question that I can answer that you might have is, why did I pick the Evo over any of the car that I could have gotten um, that's out there, you know? Um, and to be honest, I just wanted something that was, I guess, a little different. And yeah, there are a lot of Evos out there, but I feel like there are far fewer than there are other cars out there so if you don't know much about the evos the uh, first evos that came to america were I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it was the evo 8 and those were produced from 03 to 06 and then the evo 9 was produced in 06 to 07 but i believe the states only had 06 correct me if i'm wrong but 07 didn't come to here so this is the 06 evo 9 and then the Evo 10s, the Evo 10s are pretty common, so I don't, I don't really care too much about those. Um, those are from like 08 to 14, I believe. Um, but I just, I just wanted something that's different. I, I love Subarus, Subarus are super cool, but I feel like you can't even go a day without seeing one. And to me, an Evo is like a more of a head turner. They're easy to work on, uh, they produce power easy. The only real weak point on them is the transmission, or one of the most, I guess, common issues on them is the transmissions are pretty weak um, but mine is built so I don't have that issue but yeah it's super easy to work on um, I love working on it uh, I love the way she looks the front is so aggressive and then they're so clean in the factory a lot of the aftermarket bumpers and stuff like that I, I don't really like them too much I love the way it looks stock um, only one I like is the Voltex bit. so I guess what else I could talk about is, I guess, plans for the car in the future. Right now, I'm just working on the engine. Um, that's my main focus, is to get the car running good. I've been switching out a lot of the parts that are in here and going to a speed density tune. Why I go speed density? Um, from what I read, the pros and cons 
Uh, the pros seem to outweigh the cons for me anyway. It's not really necessary at this low power, but who cares? I'm gonna do it anyway. It's my car. So yeah, I'm changing out a lot of parts. Um, I are, I've already ordered a catch can. Um, I have the new block valve I'll need, uh, the sensors I'm gonna order soon, and all that stuff. So you'll be able to see that if you stick around. So yeah, first, first goal right now is to just get the car tuned. And then after that, um, I want to work on making her pretty. Obviously new wheels, I want to get a new front bumper, get the JDM Evo 9 rear bumper, uh, wrap the car, do a lot of little other things. But first is performance and then I'll work on looks because that's what's more important to me. So anyways, that's all I have for today guys. I'm going to close out the video. Just want to say thanks for watching. Um, if you haven't already, hit that sub button uh, and check out my Instagram at thatevo9 and stick around because I'll be changing out that fill line here soon.